Inshallah, you will see that it will become um, like, you know, they say fluency, fluency of a language. It means it just flows out of you, you know, flows through your mind and flows out of your mouth or flows in on the paper. You're trying to write something and you flow. It flows. So that's how you become fluent in a language. So to create that flow, you have to, in the beginning, you have to do it multiple times. And inshallah, do you see my screen? Do you see my screen? Yes. So, alhamdulillah. So, I'm just going to flip through. I'm going to flip through what we started off as and then how much we have covered. So we, do you remember why we are called, uh, why we call this Quran companion? You remember? Why did we call this? Why do we wish to become Quran companions? What was the purpose? Because you don't want to be carrying companions? Yes. Because Thank this is the course. ayah. This is the ayah. Who's going to read it for me? Safiya, can you read this for me? Okay, read the first English translation. And whoever is blind from remembrance of the most merciful, we appoint for him a devil, and he is... And he is to him a compa a, compa a companion. Yes. What is a companion? A person like a person that was around your time and they were next to you. Like they yes. were with you. Companion is from company and a company is like somebody like a friend could be somebody who's far away as well, right? Yes. A friend could be in their home and still be a friend. But a companion is somebody who's in your company, who's with you, who's attached to you, who's accompanying you. So this is very dangerous. So we, we don't want to be a Kareem companion. So we wish to be Quran companions. So we started off with the basics. We did the types of words in the Arabic language. We are doing, we're still doing Nahu, basic concepts. And we have done, we're still doing Ism. Ism, fail, harf are the three types of words. In English, they are called noun, verb, and article. Nouns, we know, name of person, place, thing, idea, adjectives, adverbs, and more. And Ism has four properties. Status, number, type, and gender. And then we did status. Rafana Subjar. So these are the signs that show the status of Rafa Nasab and Jar. Then we've done the pronouns. We've done their meanings. We've done these. We've done the question words. We've done some questions, some more questions. 
you remember all these questions? Yes. Ma mashallah, very nice. Do you remember this? Yeah. Good. And um, then we have done the... So these are called independent pronouns. We did the independent pronouns and now we have done attached pronouns, right? Yes. And we have also done pointers, right? We have done pointers. We have done some sentences with the pointers, how a pointer with the next word becomes a sentence and how it is a fragment. You remember what is a fragment and what is a sentence? Yes. What is the, what is the difference? The difference is a fragment is like a part of a word and a sentence is a whole word. Um, fragment is incomplete in meaning. Fragment is part of a sentence. It is incomplete in meaning on its own. It is not a whole thing, right? It's not a whole meaningful sentence, just a fragment. And a sentence is a complete meaningful sense statement, right? Like if I say this house, is that a fragment or a sentence? What about this house? Like I say this house dot dot dot. What is this house? This house is beautiful. This house is mine. This house is yours. This house is big. This house is old. This house is new. This house is my friend's house. So this house is, is it a sentence or a fragment? It's a fragment. Yes. And this is a house. Is that a fragment or a sentence? A fragment. This is a house. Is that a fragment or a sentence? A fragment. No. This house is a fragment. This is a house is a sentence. This house dot dot dot. It's incomplete. We don't know. We wonder what what about this house? Like oh, you, you, you go to the kitchen. You go to the kitchen. No, I said this is a house. Oh, so you have to be careful because sometimes when people are answering multiple choice questions, they make this mistake. They are very quick in clicking the answer without understanding the question. So when I said, when you go to the kitchen and you see a plate of biryani or something and you said this food, and you say this food, what about this food? It's this tasty. food, dot, dot, dot. This food? This food, is it a sentence or a fragment? Fragment. It's a fragment. But this food is mine. Is that a fragment or a sentence? A sentence. This is my plate. Is that a fragment or a sentence? Sentence. Yes. So a sentence will give you complete meaning. It will satisfy your curiosity. It will give you a complete meaning. Okay. But fragment will leave it incomplete. It will not give you complete information. It will be incomplete. So, Hazel Beth, who will tell me, is this a fragment or a sentence? What did you say? Or, who remembers the Alif Lam that we studied? What does the Alif Lam do? Hazel Beth, is it fragment or sentence? Um, it's a uh, sentence. Where is Safiya? Can you say that again? Hazel Beth, is a sentence or a fragment? Can you say that again? Yeah, Hazel Bet. Hazel Bet. Hazel Bet. This house. And Hazel Bet. Is it. this Fragment. house? Oh, Fragment. This yes. house. Yes. Oh. So you remember? What is Zalik al Kitab? Zalik al Kitab is this book. Zalika. Okay, tell me the tell me the pointers. Tell me the pointers. Hada, this 
for masculine. Adani, these two for masculine. Aulai, all of these for masculine. Adhi, this for feminine. Adani, these two for feminine. Aulai, all of these for feminine. Dali, Dalika, that for masculine. Danica, those two for masculine. Ulaika, all of, all of those for masculine. Tilka, Tilka, that. Tilka, Tilka, that for feminine. Tanika, these, those two for feminine. Ulaika, all of those for feminine. Okay, now tell me, what was Zalikal Kitab? Zalikal Kitab is this book. That book. Don't tell me uh, if you've read it in the Quran or anywhere else. Just tell me the grammatical meaning. Zalikal Kitab is not this book. Zalikal Kitab is that book. No, it's Zalikal Kitab. Yeah, I know. It says this book some, some places in the Quran. But what is the meaning of Zalika? Zalika is that. Yes. So why are you saying this book? Oh, that. Hmm. What is Tilka Sayara? Sayara is car. Um, that. Hmm. What's Sayara? Tilka, tilka Sayara. Tilka Sayara means that. That, that car. Good. That. Zalikal, yeah, Zalikal Masjid. That Masjid. Yes. So, review your pointers. Okay. And what if I remove the Alif Lam? What will it become? If I remove the Alif Lam, what's going to happen? It's going to... The will disappear? No. You tell me if Hazel Bait, I remove the uh, Alif Lam, what will happen? It will become Hazel Bait. And that is a fragment or a sentence? Uh, sentence. And what is the meaning? This, this, this house. No, that's the fragment. Hazal Bait means this house. What is the meaning of Haza Baitun? What is the meaning of Haza Baitun? Um, this is this a is, house. Yes, this is a house. And what is the meaning of? What is the meaning of? Tilka Sayaratun. That this uh, that book that Tilka is, um, Tilka Sayaratun. That is a no, car. That is a car. A car. Yes. So when you have Alif Lam, you add an A or like, no, you don't add an A. Alif Lam means it's a fragment with a pointer. Pointer. Pointer plus an ism with alif lam. Pointer plus an ism with alif lam. There is no is. Here is the rule on the screen. There is no is. Here is the rule. So when you have a pointer, you have alif lam on the ism. There is no is. There is no is. Pointer plus alif lam. On the ism, there is no is. It's a fragment. Hazal Bayt, this house. Zalikal Kitab, that book. Tilka Sayara, that car. Zalikal Masjid, that masjid. Muhammad, do you have a pen or a notebook? Are you taking notes? I'm not going to write. 
He doesn't know how to write that good. He doesn't know how to write yet. It's okay. He can practice. He's eight years old? Yes. Mashallah, he should know how to write. My six-year-old knows how to write. He knew how to write when he was four. Give him a paper and a pen. If you don't give it to him, how will he know? Let him practice. You can even uh, write it down for him so he can copy from there. Tell him to copy, write down the same thing on the whole page. One sentence on the whole page. Many times. If he doesn't know how to write Arabic, he can write Haza like H-A-Z-A. -A, Haza. Does and Zalika. Know how to write, um, in Arabic? Yeah, you can write it in, uh, write the Arabic in English. Like Roman letters. Like this. You can say Haza like this. Because class time is not play time. I don't want him playing when we are doing class. Okay? Okay. Yes. I can play all day with you guys, but when it's class time, you have to do class. And uh, next Wednesday, Muhammad should know all the pointers, their meanings, and all the pronouns and their meanings. All right. So, did you go over these? We can quickly go over these. Rukaya? Bad with tap, square, tap, like, such as, lamb, or, wow, swear, or an oath, min, from, p, in, and, in, about. Okay, so we did not do, I think there were a few we didn't do. Here. So we've done these. We missed out on these. Ala hatta ila. Ala means upon. Hatta mm -hmm. means until. Ila means towards. To or towards. Okay. okay. And any example you can think of where we have used hatta? Like in a surah or yeah, yeah. Class. Can you think of? Mm -hmm. Hatta matla al fajr. Hatta zurtum al makabir. Hatta ila balagh al shiddah al balagh. Mm-hmm. Al hakum al takasur hatta zurtum al makabir. Right. Yes. So, hatta, hatta means until. Up until or until. So write these down as also you have to learn all these. These are huruf jar. They make the next ism 
right next to them. They make them jar. What happens when you put a drop of ink in the water? Um, uh, the whole uh, the rest of the water becomes the same color. Same color, yeah. That's what these words do. They change the next word. They, when they are placed next to a word ism, they change the status of the ism. Just like the ink placed in the water, they will change all these. Bata ka flam wow min fi an ala hatta ila. These will change the status of the ism right next to them. In fact, let me show you. Can Muhammad read the Quran? Yes, he does. Okay, Muhammad read the surah, surah Qadr. Read the surah. Did you miss Wama Adraka? Did you miss the second ayah? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Do you see? Uh, Sophia, are you there? Yes. You see that after fee in the first ayah, Laylati, fee, Laylati, right? Now. What is the status of Laila T? What is fee? What is fee? Fee in fee is fee is harf jar. Yes. What is Laila T? Um. What is the status of Lailati because of fee? It should be on the word. Don't worry, just say it. Just say any answer. Yeah. Okay. It should be jar, right? Yes. Yes, so it is jar because we have alamatul jar, that is kasra, that is the. That is why it is the. Because look in the second ayah. What is the status of, what is the um, alamat on uh, Laila 2? Um, what, what is the sound? Yes, it's Rafa. So in the first ayah, Fi Laila T, the status is Jar. In the second ayah, Laila 2 is Rafa. In the third ayah, what is the status of Laila too? The uh, Rafa. Yes. What is going to be? Now this is a trick question. It's okay if you get it wrong as well because we just learned it last in the last class. What is fi ha? What is ha? What was the attached pronoun for here? She. What was the attached pronoun for here? Uh, 
Yes. Yeah, here. So, ha. Yeah, here was ha. Ha alif, ha. Waruhu, fi ha. Ha is used for her and ha is used for it. It. What is the, yes, what is the meaning of fi? In. In. What is this going to be most likely? In. In. in her or in it? It. In it. So, fi ha. And we learned last time that attached pronouns have two status. It's either nasab or jar. You remember? Yes. Because the independent pronouns are always rafa. And the attached pronouns are either nasab or jar. So, what is the status of ha in fi ha? Please say that again. We know that the attached pronouns are either nasab or jar. And we learn from the context whether they are nasab or they are jar. With fi, what is the status of ha? The status of uh, it would be jar. Yes. Very good, mashallah. Very good. So fi will make it jar because fi is a fi is a jar. Harf jar. Right? Fi is a harf jar. And when we say the word that is the harf jar acting upon that is majroor. Okay. So when we say fee laylati, laylati is majroor. Fee is harf jar, laylati is majroor, jar majroor. This is a jar majroor fragment. What is this? Jar majroor. Jar majroor, jar majroor fragment. Say it. Jar Majroor. Majroor. It's a jar majroor fragment. So fiha is also, that's also jar majroor. And over here, read the last ayah. Salamun hiya. What is the status of matla? Again? What is the haraka on matla? On where? Salamun hiya hatta. Oh, uh, status is jar. Why? Can you guess? Can you say that again? Can you guess why is it jar? Because, uh, the, it's kasra. It is kasra. But do you see anything in, in or around it that could be affecting it? Here? Hatta. We just did hatta. I, it's okay because I just told you hatta. So, hatta is also harf jar. Ala Hatta ila. These are the new words I told you today. Hatta so, matla is Hajri. Um, hatta could be Harf jar. It's only jar or just Hatta is the harf jar. It will affect the other word to become jar. Okay. Yes. So this is what it becomes. Becomes Majroor. Let me just put it out there. It becomes Majroor. And together they are called Jar Majroor Fragment.
so the other ones have to be judged too, right? Yeah, all these. All of these too? Yes, all of these are huruf jar. Oh, okay. All of these. So, uh, they can only be jar. But these ones, you can also... Uh, like... These are the words that turn the word next to it into jar. Oh, okay. These are the tools that transform the word next to it to jar status. Okay, these are called huruf jar. They turn the word ism next to them into jar. And you must remember that we are still doing ism. These are properties of ism. So when we said fi laylati, that is a jar majur fragment. Fi laylati would be a jar majur fragment. Um. Leilati is a jar. Majroor. Fi is harf jar and Leilati would be majroor. Any questions? We don't have a question. Um, why is in the meaning, is it like upon, on? It can be upon or it can be on, both. It can also be over. It can also be over. We can also do one more thing today. For the English, yes, okay, yeah. For the English, is it like um, him, like upon him? Yes, but that is for the first one. So what have I written here? Um, upon uh, Allah, Ali. And are these are these the independent pronouns or the attached pronouns? They're independent. Um, Are these the independent pronouns or attached pronouns? Um, the independent pronouns. Then what are these? Those are the attached pronouns. Read, read again, Sophia. Oh, sorry. The, the, those are the independent pronouns and those ones are the attached. What are these now? The attached pronouns. Yes, yes, these are attached pronouns. So now you work it out and then I'll tell you what it is. Work it out. Tell me how will you pronounce these? Allah with ha. Ha huma hum. How will you pronounce these? Are you allowed to add like extra letters or no? 
No, I don't think we have to. You have ya here. You have ya at the end of Allah. Ain, lam, ya. You don't need extra letters. Oh, alayhi. Yes, very good. Mashallah. Mashallah, very good. Next one. Good. Next. Yes. Yes. Next. Yes. Yes. Alayhim. Yes. Alayki. Oh, sorry. Alayki. Hmm. Alayma. Hmm. Alaykunna. Yes. Alayya. Yes. Very good. Alayna. Very good. Mashallah. Allah mabarik lakum. Rukaya, your turn. Alayhim. Muhammad is not writing. If Muhammad is not going to write, then when he comes to my he's place, he's, he's not he's not going to get a hot for you. He's asking what he should write. Give him the uh, give him the pronouns and their meanings. The independent pronouns and their meanings. That's his homework. Okay. okay? Just the pronouns and their meanings. These ones. And okay, Rukaya, your turn. Alayhim, alayhim. Alay, alayhi. Start with alayhi. Alayhi upon him. Hmm. Alayhum upon him. Alayhima. Alayhima. Alayhima upon him. Upon both of them. Alayhum upon all of them. Alayhim. Alayhim. Yes. All you remember, them. If you remember, the ha can be he and who, huma hima and hum him, and uh, hunna can be hunna hinna both. So with different attachments, they they have different sounds, uh, and they are kind of fixed. So that's not a not because of status. It's just how the Arabs fix those sounds. So alayhi. Alayhima, alayhim, alayha, alayhima, alayhinna. Continue. Alayka. What? Alayhi. Mm -hmm. Alayhi upon her. Alayhi. Alayhi, are you starting from the very beginning? Uh, I'm starting from the second line. Second line is alayha. Ha is the attached I... pronoun for alay. Uh, yeah, for here. Ha is the attached pronoun. Alayha. Mm -hmm. Alay alayha means upon her. Yes. Alayhima. Upon her for feminine. Mm -hmm. Alay Hinna. Alay Hinna. upon all of them for feminine. Mm -hmm. Alayka upon you. Alayma upon both of you. Alaykum. Nice. Very nice, yes. Upon upon all of you? Yes. Alayka. Alayki. Alayki upon 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 you for feminine. Yes. Alayma upon upon both of you for feminine. Mm -hmm. Alaykun. Kunna. Alaykunna. Alaykunna upon both all of you for 
Very nice. Ale, Aleya. Yes. Upon, upon me. Upon me. Aleya. Upon us. us. Mashallah, Tabarakallah. Very nice. Very nice. Good job. So, do we say, when we say Maryam Salamullah Alayha? Yes. We, say, we hear often. Hazrat Khadija Salamullah Alayha? Yes? Yes. Yes. So now you know Hia is Ha. So attached pronoun Ha is for Hia, for her. So salamullah alayha is for singular feminine. Okay? Whenever we say salamullah alayha, it is for a feminine, singular feminine. Salamullah alayha, singular feminine. And we say assalamu alaykum. Alaykum. Alaykum is both of you. Upon all of you. Alaikum is for all of you. Kuma is for both of you. Alaikum is all of you. We say it every day. Assalamu alaikum. All right. So alaya and alayna. And where do we say alayhim? Hmm? Hmm? Any any example in the Quran where we say alayhim? Alayhim wa al-qalim. Yes. Ghayril maghdubi alayhim. And where do we say alayhi? Um, alayhi tawakkaltu alayhi. Yes. Yes. And we, like even in duas, we say so many times we come across these. Right? And you remember how we discussed how many times in only one page we pointed out how many times we could use these. Right? Yeah. So these basics are very, very important. After that, you will only need vocabulary. And you can easily, inshallah, you will be doing translation your own, uh, on your own very soon, inshallah. So do memorize them again. If you think you're weak at something, go over them again and again. Write them down, read them again and again. Go over the meanings, okay? Till they convert into your long-term memory. Right now, when we do it once, they are only in the short-term memory. When you do it multiple times, they will become your long-term memory. Inshallah. So, I think this is enough for now. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, Inshallah, we'll go over. We'll also revise these and go over the verbs that we started. And then we'll go over this chart we have to do. Are you doing the Muslim on chart? Um, we'll start again. Yeah, go over the Muslim on chart. Then we'll do this chart. And I finished the uh, feminine Muslim chart. Muslimatun? You've done it? Yes. MashaAllah, that's very good. So we'll go move forward when even Rukaya and Muhammad are with us. So we'll be doing this. Next time. And inshallah, we'll be doing some of these. We still have to do masculine feminine. And we have to do singular, plural, and common and proper. OK. So I was going to make these slides today, but um, you guys are still a little weak in the previous things that we have done. Go over those whenever you get the time. And inshallah, we'll move forward. Okay?
but you're doing a good job. All of you are doing a very good job. And Muhammad should be a little bit, little bit, just show a little bit interest in studying Arabic. Okay? Inshallah, he's a very good boy. He should also show a little more seriousness and more interest in learning. All right? And if he needs help, you help him. Okay? So inshallah, inshallah, we'll meet on Friday. Barakallahu fikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaikum